Okay. So, uh, back to regale us with more tales about open source uh, and schematics is Andrew Greenberg. Um, you saw his talk earlier today, probably. Um, take it away. Thanks. Hi, I'm back. Why are you here? Okay. Um, uh, again, bottom of the screen is cut off. Sorry. I think that's okay, though. I'll tell you what's down there. Um, schematics, they don't suck. Uh, who's done schematics? Yes, good job. We love you because that means that you've done open source schematics. And even if we hate your schematics, we still love you for doing it. So that don't take this as shaming. This is getting better. So um, I have read in the high hundreds of schematics for my classes, and they are all awful, just completely awful. And my job has been to try and teach people how to do good schematics. The problem is nobody knows. It's not something that we teach. Is there's no thing that's good, and everybody has different ways of doing it that we've grown up with. So it's time to stop that and just let you know that I'm right and follow what I say. Okay. So a little bit of background because I think it's important. Um, always go back to what you're trying to do in the first place, right? So we have a schematic. What is a schematic? A schematic is nets and nodes. Nodes are the pins on your devices. Nets are the things that connect them together, right? How many pins are on a, I'll be, you were my undergraduate class today. How many pins are on a resistor? Good job, too. How many pins on an STM32 F4046? I have no idea. Anyway, uh, the, uh, but like, you know, like 100 or something like right? 168. Um, and uh, they have properties, nodes, right? A node isn't just a connection point. It's an input or it's an output or it's a passive or it's a no connect. They have properties. That's really important. We forget all the time that these things have properties. Um, and then finally, nets have unique names. Two different wires on your schematic with the same name are? Connected, they're the same damn net. So if you accidentally call something motor of death one and there's motor of death one over here and you think they're different, they're not. They're going to be the same motor of death. Um, that's really important. And unfortunately, um, people abuse that thing all the time. You will see a huge symbol with 100 different pins and they all have different names on the sides and another symbol with another 100 pins with all the names and you have no idea how they're connected because you have to now go from pin to pin to pin, you know, net to net to net to net. Don't do that. I'll talk about that later. So, how do you make a schematic? You add devices that have nodes, you wire the nodes together with nets, and now you have a net list. And if we were machines, we would be done. We would have a net list. We would have node, you know, device one, node one goes to device five, node three. And we'd be done. And we'd have a big CSV file. And why do we not just do that? Well, because that's dumb. Um, we um, are uh, visual processors. We are the best biologically inspired neural networks we have right now. That was dumb. Um, and uh, so, but we're very visually oriented. We are the best visual processors on the planet from my point of view. So we use schematics to simplify and to uh, communicate function that we could not in text. Um, it's a consistent visual representation of design. We have something called standard design patterns, which we'll talk about a little bit later, which came from actual this damn software people. Um, we're always following software people 10 years behind. Um, and most importantly, a schematic doesn't just say what's connected to what, it communicates function, data and power flow. Never forget that. You are graphic design artists with a schematic tool brush. Okay, so uh, schematics should be simple, they should be clear, and they should be obsessively well labeled. If I just see ICs and wires, you've failed. Because I don't know why you chose the ICs, I don't know what your voltage levels are, I don't know why they're connected to what, I don't know if that's a SPI bus or an I2C bus, because they're the same damn thing on an MMA, BMA280 chip, blah, blah, right? Like, you need to tell me what you're doing. Um, and good schematics also have a really inherent beauty. They're simple, they're direct, you look at it, you kind of get it, and then you start scratching your head what's really going on. So, here's a great example. What the hell is this? Yeah, you can't say anything. Come on, what is it? Let's go, let's go. What? Who said that? 5,000 bonus points, you are literally the first person to ever get it. It's that. <laughs> it's just a voltage divider. It's got a capacitor filter on it, right? But this, uh, that, the, you, the ground is cut off on the bottom, right? This is, this is what we're used to, right? This is a design pattern. This is garbage. <laughs> 
And so the thing today about not sucking with schematics is don't do this. You all looked at this and you couldn't figure out this was, even though it's the same as this. But this is a design pattern and this is clear. And this is what we need to do as open source schematic enthusiasts is move towards this kind of uh, outline. So design patterns are from software engineering. Um, a design pattern is not a finished design. It's a pattern that you see over and over again. So a ring buffer or a whatever from software. Um, for us, it's a voltage divider or it's a filter. It's a non-inverting app follower. It's a high side MOSFET switch. These are the things we see all the time. And if you show it to me in, a, in a, the right format, I'm not going to think twice. I'm just going to say there's a high side switch. Um, and if you put it upside down and you put the de whatever facing whatever, I'm going to have to actually redraw it or like really think what the hell is going on. So <clears throat> in, in, in the industry, there's this thing called reducing friction, right? We're trying to reduce friction to manufacturing. This is kind of reducing time to grok. How fast can you get your person to understand what you're trying to do? And if I can't grok your schematic, you've lost, because then I get really angry. All right, um, so we've gone, uh, I don't need to go over that. Um, so here's a more complicated schematic. That's really hard to see, sorry. But that we, can, we can follow it, right? Um, where, where do we start? Well, we're in the west, so we start on the, uh, on the left. What does this say? It's, you can't read it. It says VUSB. What does that mean? USB, right? Oh, look, someone even said 4.5 to 5.5 volts. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so they're not just 5 volts. It's, oh, yeah, it's VUSB, which is like, who knows, right? Because your damn computers suck. All right, there's um, a zero-ohm resistor. That's interesting. Why is there a zero-ohm resistor there? Oh, so we can disconnect it if we have to. Ooh, a test point. Good job, guy. There's, what are these for? Decoupling. Yeah, just decoupling, right? They're kind of off by themselves. It's kind of clear. They're right there. They're just attached to this. Um, what the hell is this? We have no idea. But it's connected to ground, it's got an in and it's got an out, so it's something powery, maybe it's a switchy thing. It's got a fault with a bar, so yeah, it's probably a switch. Um, you can't see this over here, but, oh god, that's so out of focus. That says 4.5 to 5.5 and it says external. Oh, look, we have VUSB and a 5, a five volt external thing. That also goes through the same exact pattern, well almost, this should be over there. And then look, there's two MOSFETs back to back with a chip below it, what's that? some kind of reverse polarity or something, right? These are blocks of things together. And, you know, we could keep going, what's this? <laughs> um, you know, the, the idea is we've got these blocks of things that we understand, and as long as they're blocked together, we can say, oh, that's a thing. Okay. Um, so, sheets. Um, this is something that we get wrong all the time. Um, minimize the number of schematic sheets if you can. If there's like one, if there's three components per sheet, you've done it wrong. If there is the Olamex people, uh, you've also done it wrong, which is my favorite thing in the world. This is the Olamex STM32 E407 board. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the Olamex people, and I hate their schematic. Why is that a thing? <laughs> right? That should be broken across pages. <coughs> also, they did the terrible thing of they put the little names next to each thing. I now need to figure out where those go. So, okay, tell me, where does that pin go? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's go look. Oh, I can't zoom in, apparently. Uh, where, where is FMC A9, which is PF15? I guess I searched for PF15. All right, let me find PF15. Goes there. It's somewhere. Anybody see it? Oh, it's in the way lower corner down there. Oh, look, it goes to that connector. Great. So instead of actually being able to just follow it with my eyes, I now have wasted like 30 seconds figuring that out. Now I have to do that 500 times. So don't do this. Don't fit everything on one sheet. There's no reason to do that, especially in, with the tools we have available for us today. Um, I don't know. It, it's really important that you try and keep... Don't go nuts on the sheets, though. If you've got too many sheets, then we have to flip back and forth between sheets, and then it takes too long. So there's a, there's a balance. There's an there's a optimum there. Um, try and keep subsystems on one page. Even if it gets complicated, it's better to have it all one subsystem on one page. Finally, I don't know why this is still true, but schematics are always 0.1 inch, even in Europe, even in the non barley corn units of measurement world systems. Um, eight and a half by 11, 11 by 17 at 0.1 inches. So it's interesting, but that's, that's how it is, uh, and you should continue to do that until someone fixes it. Um, this is one of the most important things I'm going to tell you. I have two important things to tell you today. I've already told you, but this is one I haven't told you. 
um, which way do positive supplies always point? They always point up. Where do grounds point? They always point down. Where do negative supplies point? They always point down. <laughs> you will be tempted not to do that. Don't do that. Do it how it should be. This is why it matters. What the hell is this? <laughs> this is my favorite data sheet to hate. This is a max in part. It's a max 2769. It's an open, it's a, sorry, it's a uh, software defined radio GPS receiver chip. Um, it is literally the worst schematic I've ever had to work with. Um, and uh, so, uh, so what's going on? Well, uh, I don't know, because I can't tell. So here's VCC underscore IF. So that's the intermediate fre frequency VCC, I guess. Where does that go? Is that a power supply? If it's a power supply, why is it blocked by capacitors? Oh no, that's a ground. And that's the power supply, VCCIF. And so they're using net, like net names to connect it. So now I have to go search for where is VCCIF. Well, it turns out it's like down here. Um, so I'm not going to show it to you. But this is horrible and dumb. Why, you know, like net grounds go down, power supplies go up, and it's part of the visual simplistic design patterns that we're used to. The second thing is document your schematics. We keep forgetting this. We put the schematics on, we go through the ERC, and we, blor we, we uh, do our board layout. Screw that. Take the extra five minutes, that's all it takes, to put some text on your document. Where's the power input? What's it coming from? Is it a 9-volt battery? Then, you know, mark down. This is a 9-volt battery input. If this is a wall, external wall plug, say it. Use the text tool. What are the expected voltages, the expected powers? What, don't, what wouldn't you expect if you saw this? Um, also, talk, blocks. Identify blocks. You can take your line tool, which is not necessarily your net tool, although eagle it is, which is horrible. Fix that, eagle people. Um, and uh, you can put a line around a block of, of components and say, this is the power supply. This is the motor of death circuit. Uh, you can put red boxes around things and say, this is the motor of death circuit, right? And so the whole idea is that you're visually communicating blocks and subsystems to people. All right, so for example, what's this? We don't know. There's like an audio jack on top. There's some a linear power supply in the middle. There's maybe a microcontroller. There's a, there's a very cute, you know, seven segment display. I like that. But I couldn't tell you what this is. And it, even if you could actually read it, which you can't, you still couldn't tell what it is. So here that is redrawn, all right? And you can't read this, but what it says is it says power, uh, battery in. We don't know what, oh, it says plus nine volts. So nine volt battery in, apparently. And it says flash IO. Oh, that's interesting. So something about flash input output with, uh, audio jacks. It's got user interface with some buttons and pull-ups, and it's got a display. Well, okay, so, oh, and look, we, we even now know what it says. It's high-speed flash sync. Oh, so they're, they're synchronizing, like, maybe a, um, uh, one of those chopper, light chopper things to a flash so they can capture a movement, right? So, okay, so now we understand the context. Now we understand maybe what's going on. Now we can start to see, well, okay, so how do they input the sensor, and where, how do they do the flash? These are the things we can start to ask. So with, the, with less than five minutes of labeling, all of a sudden, it pops out what the form and function of this is. And nobody does this. Just take five minutes and do it, and your schematics will not suck. Um, more labels are always better. Um, I've never seen a schematic, uh, a, schematic, a schematic with too much text. I really haven't. Um, I mean, don't do, like, you know, paragraphs, but not enough text ever. Um, net name should also be descriptive. Um, your tool will call it n dollar sign five or whatever, right? Um, that's not useful because that doesn't tell you anything. V underscore USB tells you a lot more, right? D zero, D one, D three, that tells you a lot more. So name the nets. Don't let them automatically name for you. Also, finally, <coughs> as graphical designers, use the white space to separate functional blocks. Um, graphic designers know that the white space is way more important than the actual thing you're looking at. Um, and that's really important. And if you can ever do reading on graphical design, that will really help your schematics. Um, even though he's a jerk, Edward Tufte um, <laughs> has uh, the visual display of quantitative information. That's a nice place to start because it talks about white space and clean lines and lack of clutter and things like that. And that's a nice place to go. I like to think of uh, schematic 
uh, people doing schematic capture as data and power flow visualization scientists, right? You're visualizing data and power flow in a way that's understandable to mere mortals. Okay. So a couple things about part numbers, because we often forget that that's a thing. Um, there, you know their letters and the numbers, R1, C5, U3. Um, there's a standard. Please use the standard. Um, the st you know, it's like a little thing is it's not IC, it's U. I don't know why actually it's U, but it is. Um, and uh, it's, you're going to get in trouble if you start going away from the standard, because uh, uh, people are going to assume that your D1 is a diode and not some other thing that starts with a D. And so it's, it's really important. Go to the web page, start using that as a reference if you need to. Um, the sequential number doesn't matter. It's just an, a unique identifier. If you want to OCD, go back and make sure there's no gaps. You can, but don't do that. That's dumb. Um, the value, resistance gnome, base part number of a chip, um, and also don't forget about NP or DNP for no place. If you want a resistor that's there that you don't want placed, give it the value of NP or DNP. So you're alerting your future self that's true. Finally, if you have multiple sheets, a pro tip is to give your, uh, reference, your uh, reference IDs three digits. Uh, unless you have more than 99 on one page, of course, uh, then you'd have need four digits. But with three digits, that first digit can be your sheet number. If you have more than like 99 per sheet and nine pages, you've got a really cool project. I'm hashtag impressed. Um, but uh, usually that fits in really well to our size of projects. Uh, and that way you'll see that R403 is on sheet four. You just know where it is on your board to your schematic. Also, if you happen to remember that sheet four is your power sheet, you know right away that R403 on your circuit board is part of your power circuit and not part of the CAN transceiver it's next to. Okay, uh, this is um, one of the most important parts that you can do to not make your schematics suck, and that is use symbols that make sense. Um, symbols are abstract representation of your component. They've got power inputs and outputs. Um, I say that inputs are on the left, <laughs> uh, outputs are on the right, data and power flow left to right, power goes on the top and ground goes on the bottom, right? Now, when I say that because that's what we're used to, I don't care who you are, that's true. So there you go. Um, so uh, this is way more important than you'd think. When you go to a schematic, if you see someone who's done this, you'll understand the part five, ten times faster than you would if they do something different in particular. Oh, I've got some examples, sorry. <coughs> so let's take a quick look at this, right? So if power flows left to, left to right, this is the input. Oh, look, someone has put a label here. It says V solar, and this says zero to 5.45 volt from the five cell array. Okay, so that's cool. We know that's power input. Oh look, and all the input parts of this, clearly it's a switching power supply, right? Those are on the left. There's enable and auxiliary and select. These are on the left. These are the inputs to the chip. The outputs from the chip are V out, duh, and feedback, right? Yes, that's an input, but it's feedback from the output, so you want it next to, on the same side as the output. It's got power good, it's got feedback to, and then it's got grounds on the bottom, right? Duh, but people don't do this. Um, same thing with, a, here's a CAN transceiver. Power on top, ground on the bottom, duh, right? Didn't, who even thinks about that? All the inputs are on the left that go to the microcontroller, the TX and RX and shutdown and speed, and what's on the right? The CAN bus. Right, so we've grouped our pins by inputs and outputs and digital functionality. Um, and that's what I just said, we group pins on the symbol by function. So all the B ports are with the B, other B ports, all the C ports are with the other C ports on your microcontroller. You group the I squared C or the SPI, put the power pins together. Um, big symbols are okay if they're big components, if they're big components in the real world. Again, I wouldn't go to the Olamex side of things, but it's okay if they're big. Um, feel free to break apart a component, like I said earlier. If that makes sense, if you can spread it across sheets, that's better. Okay, this is the lead up to my entire talk. You are all guilty of this because I am guilty of this too. Sometimes we make symbols that look like the packages that our parts come in. Do not ever do that. That is dumb. Remember I showed you that, that, that let me go back for just a minute. I showed you this. That's what this, they did here. This was like a graduate student who did this. Does it make sense to us at all that the idle pin is right next to VCCIF? 
how does that help us understand what the pin is or what section idle is from? Is idle an output or is idle an input? I have no stinking clue. What part of the chip is it for? Why are all these VCCs down here? There's a clock. Is the clock an input or an output? I don't know because they made it the same damn uh, symbol that the package is. There is no relation. There is no reason to do this. It is not even laziness. It's stupidity to do it that way. Um, so don't ever do this. Right? Make an abstract symbol that represents the functionality by grouped pins of your part and everybody will be happier. Now some people say that uh, I made the symbol to be to, um, uh, so that I could know which pins are connected to which pins. No, that's what your EDA tool is for. So you can click on something and it tells you what it's connected to. Right? So no, the schematic tells you form and function. Yes. I think, I think it's, as you describe, it's so that people, they're, they're suggesting layout with the schematic of the eval board. You need to put these capacitors this close to these idle chips, right. or idle pins, and so on. And I think it's, I see it a lot more with things like RF. Right. And they shouldn't do that. If they want to, if they want to physically put a capacitor by a pin and put a little box around it and say, keep proximal to pin, I'm all for that. You can totally give hints about layout in your schematic. But actually putting in this package is not useful for that. That should, yeah, it should all be in, in the layout. So don't do that. Uh, okay, and so I was going to show you the actual thing. Eh, I won't. You've already seen it. Okay, because it really is the worst thing in the world. Uh, the other thing is uh, do not connect by name. Like we said before, if you have wires going from one place to another, um, try and take and actually route a physical wire. I know this is a pain in the butt. But I can follow that wire with my eyes in a tenth of a second rather than having to take the 20 or 30 seconds of hunting down where that damn wire goes. Um, that's why we're visual beasts. That's why schematics exist, is because we use our eyes quickly. Um, if there's more than three wires, use a bus. Um, let me show you a bus. There, there's a bus. There's a giant chip, and that giant chip has giant things. Uh, let's see what's up here. Uh, I don't know what this is. Uh, it doesn't say because they're jerks. Uh, oh, a data 2, data 3, VDD, clock. This is an SD card. Um, <coughs> and the SD card has a bunch of pins, SD dat, SD command, SD clock, and they all go into a bus. And this is the SD card bus, apparently. And now I can just go look. Oh, look, there's some data pins down here, and there's some data pins over here, and there's the SD CDs over there. I can just really quickly follow that. Right? So use a bus whenever you have too many wires to go across your schematic. It's an easy way to do it. It's a little OCD, but it's an easy way to do it. Okay, um, so how do you actually make your schematic? Um, uh, oh, geez. Uh, you add your central components, you add your connectors on the sides, right? Because you're going to have your data flow from left to right. Um, and <coughs> the input ones are on the left and the output ones are on the right. If you have the same thing, then you can have a uh, thing that flows from left to right and then down and then back, right? You can make a circle and then everyone will go, know, oh, look, there's inputs and outputs on the same connector. It's just intuitive. You add your passives, you wire groups together, your power supplies, controllers, and then you add documentation. Duh. I didn't need to say that. One of the things that we tend to not do as uh, uh, hobbyists and open source people is we tend not to use the automated tools, and that's a huge mistake and you know it's a huge mistake, so stop it. Um, so we're always going to use electrical rule checks, and every time you make a symbol, you're going to take the extra five minutes, and you're going to set the actual properties of each device node. You're going to make power inputs, power inputs, and power outputs, power outputs. You're going to make grounds a supply. You're going to make input only pins, input only, and most important, output only pins, output only. Uh, so when you connect your output only pins together, your tool yells at you, and you don't have to do a spin. As much as Lane and crew would love you to do multiple spins on your board, <laughs> um, let's try to not do that. Um, so uh, we're going to use the node properties to run rule checks, right? So are all the inputs connected with an output? Are there power nodes connected to a power supply? Blah, blah, blah. ERC is critical. Do not use a tool that does not have ERC, period. I don't think anybody doesn't have ERC anymore. Maybe GEDA, I don't remember. Um, but everybody who, who we care about does. Um, from my point of view, think of your ERC as your compilation. If your ERC fails, your schematic is broken. 
right? You can get warning messages, and you can okay warnings and errors if you know what's going on, but it's broken until you've done that. Okay, there's a check, quick checklist, and then we got to go. Um, I don't even need to go through this. Um, you know, make sure that you're using supply symbols. If you have a 5-volt supply, don't run a 5-volt wire that says 5 volts. Just use a supply symbol. Um, all supplies are pointing the right way. We've got nets. Things are named, whatever. We've gone through this. Um, yep, that's all. Thank you. There's a snack downstairs. Uh, but any one question? Yes. This is something I have complained to the EDA tool people forever, which is if you have a pin that's capable of multiple things, why can't you set an attribute for how you're using it, right? That's really important, because you're right. I would never want to go and set a pin that could be lots of different things, insta you know, try state, output, input, on a schematic, generic schematic of a symbol, right? When I don't know how I'm gonna use it in the future. Yeah, so no, I totally agree. It's too bad we don't know anybody who makes EDA software around here. Right, Kevin. Uh, okay.